Why? Hello and welcome everybody. Also, good morning. Today, I wanted to go ahead and bring you guys some non-Path of Exile content. Kind of taking a, a step into the past here. And show you guys my latest addiction. So this new MMO came out uh, about a week ago called Raven Dawn. And I've been playing it for a couple of days now. Playing on uh, server Seraphine. Seraphine. I wanted to go ahead and show you this game. So for those of you guys who remember my content way back in the day, I used to play an MMO called Arcage. This game takes very, very, very heavy inspiration off of Arcage. So what I'm going to do is kind of give a first impressions and kind of compare it to that. So first off, in this game, you have a housing system very similar to Arcage. If you take a look at the world map, I've got like my own little personal plot located right here. You can see I'm actually uh, growing cotton, so this is what I primarily harvest. Um, kind of like as a source of GP and crafting. There is no labor in the game, so you can kind of play as much as you want. There's like this crafting limitation that kind of kicks in, but it is like very extreme, so we're not really going to talk about that. The game really promotes open world exploration, which is pretty nice as well. Uh, what I mean by that is you can kind of progress in kind of like any nature you want. At the beginning, you're going to focus mainly on doing quests in the, in the zone you're in, but you could truly do whatever you want, right? You have the ability to uh, create these things called trade packs. Trade packs, if you guys have ever played Arcage before, essentially what trade packs are is you use materials um, that you can find from just playing the game. You can bundle it together as a package, and then you can take it from one outpost to another. The further you travel, the more GP you earn, and this fluctuates as a player-driven economy, so the more people that are doing it, uh, the less the demand will be, for example, whereas the or, or higher the demand, right? So an example would be you could take a trade pack from right here, so Ravencrest Trade Post, all the way to say you, you could go on a boat and you could sail all the way down to uh, right over here, I think Orca Bay, I, th I think has one, maybe not. If not Orca Bay, you could do like over here, there's a, there's a spot. However, on the flip side, you could have people who flag up in PvP and go on the offense and try to kill you, take your trade pack and then turn in for themselves. So, you know, a little bit of everything. Um, it does have fast travel, so you have the ability to fast travel, but teleporting is a bit limited. So now let's get into some of the more juicy stuff, the combat. All right, so the way this game works is there's currently 10 worlds, or sorry, two, two main servers, and you have a bunch of channels. And these channels essentially are kind of like pseudo, uh, I don't really know what to call them, pseudo servers. It's like a little miniature server within it. If you've played RuneScape, it's like a world, right? Um, so if places are a little overcrowded, you can jump to the different world. War Mode Channel is a channel that is permanent PvP, and you get 10% bonus experience if you are on War Mode. Um, so it kind of incentivizes PvP. I'm going to go ahead and move a little bit over here to the left, because this is kind of where one of my uh, zones are that I want to grind. Um, there are these little things you can pick up on these boards. This is a big part of uh, the game, I guess you could say. They're called uh, Island Outposts here. And when you go to the Island Outpost, you can grab this like grinding quest. So for example, I have to gain... Um, 60,000 experience killing the monster that I chose. Now, what this does is this is kind of the, your way of grinding reputation, but there's different types of reputation in the game. So, for example, you have one form of reputation that if I were to pop up this little button here, you can see this is kind of like, it's not necessarily a skill tree, but the more things you do, the more reputation you earn, the more bonuses you earn. So, 5% mountain movement speed, 3% drop rate of rare items, increased prestige points. That's what it's prestige from Ranger's Company. Ranger's Company is this little board thing I was telling you about, and this is where you primarily get most of your accessories. Going a little bit more over the Arcage comparison, why I like it. This game is very, very, very grindy. For example, I'm about 30 hours in now, and I am overall, so I'm level 25, but I have also leveled my other classes. So my Archery is 21, my Holy is 21, my Protection is 21, my Spiritual is 21, and my Wizardry is 21. And my main is currently Shadow Warfare Witchcraft. So let's talk about what that means. If you press X here and you go to the stat location right here, and we look at this little button here, this is telling me that I am gaining 25 bonus attribute points for my inactive archetypes. What that means is as you level your other classes, you will provide any of your boat, like any of your class combinations, will gain bonus points for those inactive classes. Vice versa, you also gain bonus skill points. So you are actually promoted to play multiple specs or level multiple characters. 
Now, this is not as so bad as it seems. A lot of people will say, yeah, but I only want to play one spec. I want to play melee. I don't want to play, you know, bow character. I don't want to be a healer. That's actually fine because what you can do is there's a lot of life skilling, crafting, things like that in the game. And the way you can go around doing that is you can grind on maybe your main spec like I'm doing now. And then maybe uh, you, you know, your stuff on your house is ready. So if I click house mode, you can see I have all of this gathering here. If I had to give an example of how much this would, would this would offer me right now, uh, I would say, so we're getting, let's use an example here, for killing one monster right around our level, 675 XP, but that's actually rested experience. If I had to go back to my house and harvest those plots, it would be closer to like 10,000 experience, right? So you can simply respec your class when you get to your house every couple of hours. It's not it's not expensive at all. The, the price here is like 290 silver, like for respecking one, I have 41k and I'm not even trying to make money. Um, so it really does promote playing multiple specs, leveling everything. And you don't have to do it like all the way. Simply doing it what I did to like 21 is already a really good spot. A lot of people are comparing this game to Tibia because of the art style. The art style is a little bit hard to get into at first. The, the camera angle is definitely something a bit unique. But for me, myself personally, after playing it for just a little bit, I did not really mind it whatsoever. There is a lot of gathering aspects as well. The only problem with the gathering aspects is since there's only currently two servers, uh, most things are pretty much getting camped. So you know how it is in MMOs. That's kind of just how it is. If you're ahead of the curve, you're you're kind of rolling. If you're behind the curve, well, man, you're kind of learning, right? So that's kind of me right now. Uh, overall, though, I'm having a wonderful time with the game, I'm having a blast streaming it. The developers are super kind. Uh, and I actually have a referral code. No, this is not sponsored. It's just simply a bonus for me playing the game. I'll link my referral code down below where you can find it on Twitch. If you use my referral code, you'll get a basically a three day subscription to the game. Um, and then if you end up subscribing to the game, which is $8, I myself get $5. So it's a win-win. On that note, let's talk about the cash shop because I know a lot of people care about stuff like this. So I myself haven't paid too much attention here as I'm just kind of blasting the game and having fun. So let's go ahead and open it up real fast. The primary thing to note here is their main selling point is the game is not pay to win. You will notice there's this thing called like Raven packs and stuff. I know when we see cards, we immediately think of swiping pay to win whales. That's not how it works. As you kill mobs, you get these little sacks and you can open them and you can get these points. These are called Dawn Essence. You can also get these from questing. When you get Dawn Essence, you open up these things called packs, these card packs. And what these card packs do is you actually allocate them onto your tree. So if you look at a skill and you click it, it has the option of A card or B card. So this adds some flexibility, not only to your tri-class system, but more specifically how you want to play. So a prime example, Feasting Strike over here, right? Feasting Strike with Polar Bear card, it does not heal you, but instead it gives you Weapon Leech. So that's, that's better for like auto attack builds. If we were to regularly look at what Feasting Strike does right now, Feasting Strike makes it so that... Um, it does weapon damage and heals you a bonus based off of your Aether. Aether is a mechanic that everyone can use to dump. So for example, what I'm going to do on this guy is like, a, I'm, I'm going to hit him with a fancy rotation. I'm going to hit him with my guillotine, which dumps Aether. Then I'm going to use stock, reset my global cooldown, hit him with the coup de gras. You ready? 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 Check it. So there's, there's even like weaving in between. You've got skills that reduce global cooldown. You've got stats that reduce global cooldown. You've got stats that also uh, lower your base attack time. So you can see here, there's a stat called Haste. This is something that's important to me because I feel without this stat, the game can feel a bit sluggish, you know? Your scaling in your character hits harder, but you don't physically feel faster. So I always appreciate when there's a nice detailed breakdown right here on what the Haste mechanic does. So that is very, very nice. Anyway, uh, let's go ahead and look back at that cash shop. I got a little distracted there by the cards. So. I believe, to my knowledge, there are like three things in the auction house, um, aside from pure cosmetics. There is, uh, let's see here, where is it? Is it uh, services? Uh, okay, this. You have uh, mobile potion slash vendor NPC, and then bank slash marketplace NPC. You have this, and you have cosmetics, and that's it. You can't really buy anything else with the shop. So I, I really enjoy it. I like the... The fair monetization they're doing, there's always an argument people are making where, yeah, but the game is pay to win because there's a subscription. I think this is a bit of an odd take considering games we have these days, but that's just me. Also, it's kind of interesting if you notice there, there's different dialogue options. 
I don't fully know what all the dialogue options do, but you can decide if you kind of want to be like the villain going through the campaign, right? Or the questing, or if you want to be the neutral guy, or if you want to be the, the guy that's, you know, representing everyone and promoting stuff. Uh, there's also a massive uh, thing when it comes to crafting here. Sorry, I'm kind of information dumping. <laughs> so when it comes to crafting, each skill has a little miniature skill tree. Nothing that crazy. It's just a little tiny little skill tree. But crafting has a massive play with the game. Monsters themselves don't actually drop gear. You have to craft your gear. On top of crafting your gear, you have to like infuse your gear. So this, this takes me to probably the last segue before I stop here on something I like about the game. So there's three armor types, and they kind of take this from Arcage. So you have, for example, I'm currently wearing leather. So you have leather, cloth, and plate. They don't actually give you more base defense. So cloth has the same base defense as plate. The difference, if you look down, is the set bonus. So I think plate has like weapon defense, healing received, and I don't remember what else. Cloth, I think, has attack speed and global cooldown reduction, which I actually think I want to swap to. And then there's this thing called infusing. So, if I were to click, uh, what is it, I? How do I go to Infusion again? I click I and I click Infusion. And I have my, my Warrior's Great Axe here. And I put this over here. You grind these little things here called Infusion Stones, whatever they're called, and you put them on. And when you reach the next break point, then your weapon will get upgraded and you can see the bonus. Now, the reason why this is important is maybe you go, you know, I really like this two-handed Great Axe, but I kind of want to try out a two-handed sword or I kind of want to try out Dual Wield. Well, have no fear you can actually take your weapon off and in that infusion tab instead of putting it at the top you could put it at the bottom and then you could buy a new weapon and infuse everything you invested into this current one right the only difference is that uh you'll lose like a little bit of silver and that's about it and i think with dual wield, there's a bit of a different restriction because you're trying to fuse two weapons so you need half the amount versus a two-hander is different you're investing like everything into like one weapon right i think that pretty much summarizes that when it comes to crafting as well, like you have primary attribute, quality crystal, whole bunch of cool stuff. So I'm pretty excited. This will probably be my game that I am playing until last Epoch. I never got to make a video on that, but super excited for Epoch. So anyway, hope you guys had a wonderful time. Hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. Sorry if I information bloated you guys too much. I'm just having a lot of fun playing this game and delayed this video. <laughs> so I'll catch you guys all later. Thanks again so much for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, Please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget, don't forget you can catch me streaming live every day at twitch.tv slash pox. Referral code will be pinned down below and also on my live stream. Take care and thanks for watching.